Hey there loves! Welcome back to my channel. If you've just hopped into this video, welcome! This is Jean Castillo de Jesus and I release videos in which I share my know-hows on the nitty-gritty of English and research. If you want to reinforce your learnings on these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. Are you writing your research paper? Do you need a guide in crafting your context and rationale or background of the study? Then you just found the right video because today I will tackle the components of a well-written background of the study or context and rationale. In one of my videos before, I already discussed the different subparts of chapter 1. You may also watch that video so you will acquire an overview on the different or various subparts. Link is provided in the description box. The background of the study and context and rationale serve similar purpose. In our school, which is Allen National High School, we follow the prescription of the Division of Northern Samar. So it depends on your institution whether you will utilize the term background of the study or context and rationale. If you use background of the study, that is correct. And if you use context and rationale, that is also right. Again, it depends on the format prescribed by the school or the learning institution. So now, let us jump to the meat of this discussion. We will now talk about the background of the study or context and rationale. In this video, expect that you will be provided an illustration of the components of the background of the study or context and rationale. You will be provided with the sample phrases that you can utilize in writing your background of the study or context and rationale. And we will also discuss the criteria of writing a good background of the study or context and rationale. And of course, I will provide a sample of background of the study or context and rationale at the end of this video. So I hope you watch till the end. Without much ado, let us now start with the short description of background of the study and context and rationale. The background of the study or context and rationale explains the area of the research to set context for the issues or problems at hand. Second, it shows the current information regarding the issues or problem, previous studies, and its relevant history and it tries to build on gaps in literature that has led to your study. This follows the deductive approach, meaning from general to specific. So check out this illustration. The first component is the general or universal concept about the core concern. The opening paragraph features the general information of the problem, the explanation of how things should be happening, and the reasons why things are happening. Number two, we have data and findings as evidence to the existence of the core concern. Here, the background information may include the important and relevant studies. Either they support or refute the study. You have to look for previous studies or data to support your research. The studies or data must be from different settings or perspectives. First, we have the global perspective. Second, since the Philippines is part of the Southeast Asian countries, then you have to provide the ASEAN perspective. Then, of course, the national perspective. And lastly, the local context. For example, in your barangay, in your municipality, or in your district or school. Thirdly, we have the knowledge gaps. So, let us first define what knowledge gap is. These refer to the gray areas observed in previous researches. A research gap is the lack of sufficient information that has not yet been explored within the field of research. In this part, you may answer the question
questions. What has been done to address the gaps? What policies or guidelines have been formulated based on the research gaps presented in the previous studies? Fourth, we have the overview of the methodology. So, when we talk about methodology, this refers to the research procedures or the procedures that you will implement or apply in the conduct of your research. Of course, this include the general objective, target respondents, research site, and the research design. Last but definitely not the least, the general statement of the significance or perceived impact of the study. Although this sounds simple, but I have observed that in the previous years, this is one of the fossilized error of my students. They fail to relate their chosen study or their core concern to their specialization or strand, their field of expertise. So if you choose a topic, make sure that you will be able to relate it to your field of interest. For example, if you are taking ABM, UMS, GA, or TVL, then in the last part of your background of the study or context and rationale, you should be able to relate your core concern or research problem to your specialization or major or strand. This time, we will come to the helpful phrases in stating the context of your study. So, you may use these phrases. It is known that researchers have demonstrated, debate exists about, and is controversial because. Of course, you are not limited to use these phrases that I have mentioned. You may read more literature, more academic papers, so that you'll be able to harness your skills in utilizing transitional devices and academic language in writing. Now, here are the criteria in writing the context and rationale or background of the study. It must be composed of three to five pages. Quotations must be typed in single space. Quotations must not be more than five lines. There should be no footnoting in the first page. It should not be cut and paste. The chapter title should be in capital letters. And the titles of the subparts must be highlighted. Only the first letter of the content words of the subtitles should be capitalized or encoded in uppercase. The first line of the paragraph should be indented. And of course, it must be in paragraph form. And you may also avoid long sentences. But of course, it depends on your writing style. Sometimes, if your sentences are too short, then it goes to show that you have lack of information or lack of data as regards your chosen core concern. But of course, in writing, you must vary the length of your sentences and even your paragraph. If in the first sentence or in the first paragraph, it is very short, then in the next one, it must be quite long in which you will be able to showcase the richness of your ideas. Use simple words which are straight to the point. Limit your borrowing of ideas. Acknowledge the source of any idea copied. And the first page must be the original words of the researcher. Now, here is a sample context and rationale written by my student last school year 2020 to 2021. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. 
If I was able to help you write your context and rationale or background of the study, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of my lessons. Thank you so much for being here and please do love research. Till next time, bye!